Hey, it's Jared with Gear and Light. I've got the Canon R6 here, and we're gonna take a look at the top settings that I changed on this camera. Uh, now, I rented this camera for a few weeks so that I can use it to teach some high school kids about video production and photography. I shoot primarily on Sony, but I used to shoot on Canon back in the day, and it's been really interesting to me how familiar this platform on this R6 is uh, compared to what I was used to back when I used to shoot on a 5D Mark III. Uh, way back in the day. Uh, and then, of course, I've been shooting on Sony for, gosh, what feels like at least a decade now since the A7S first came out. So before I dive into those settings, I just wanted to make you aware of my Canon R6 course. If you want to learn everything that there is to know about shooting with this camera, from settings to actual shooting settings when you are shooting in different environments, how what all of the different buttons do, how to get through the menu, how all of this stuff works, you'll want to check out my R6 course. This course is a few hours long and it's going to walk you through everything, including manual camera controls. You spent a lot of money on this camera, so why not learn how to use it like a professional? Check out the link in the description below. So let's take a look at the settings. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the menu and go into the settings here. Obviously the first thing that I would do on a camera like this is just make sure that my date and time was set correctly. So we're gonna to go to the gear menu or the wrench menu and then go down and make sure that we have our date and time set. That's uh, one of the most important things on a camera because when it comes to sorting your files, when you take photos and you put them into something like Adobe Lightroom or you upload them to your phone or anywhere where you're going to be sorting through photos by date, you want to make sure that the, the time and the date is set correctly. So that's just kind of a, a bonus setting to look at first. My second bonus setting would actually be going in and formatting your cards within the camera. Now, of course, we could format our cards on the computer, or maybe they were formatted in the last camera that we had them in, but I highly recommend formatting your cards in the camera that you're using them in because, you know, there's issues with files getting corrupt and just things with these SD cards. It's so much better if you put the cards in the camera and format them. You obviously wanna make sure that you've copied everything off of those cards first. And I also don't recommend taking cards from one camera and putting them into this camera and then continuing to use them thinking, well, I've got photos that I don't wanna get rid of on there yet. I highly recommend taking the cards out backing up what you want, save what you want on your computer, and then put the cards back in your camera and format them. All right, so let's go to the beginning here and take a look. So the first thing I do is put my camera in raw capture, and I also capture in JPEG as well. The reason that I shoot in raw and then also capture JPEGs uh, is I'll give you the couple of reasons here. First of all, the raw image is gonna give me much more data to work with when it comes to editing my photos. If the color balance wasn't right or something just wasn't right, I needed to bring back some exposure or maybe my image was overexposed and I wanted to darken it down a little bit in software like Adobe Lightroom, I'm gonna have much more room to work with in a raw image than I am with a JPEG. Now, the reason that I still capture JPEGs as well is that I use those as a backup. I don't necessarily need two copies of very large RAW files because it's not very common that I'm gonna have an issue with the RAW files being damaged or broken on the SD card. Most of the time, everything goes well there. But in the instances where something doesn't go right, maybe one file is corrupt, at least I have a JPEG backup. And so I capture both RAW and JPEG so that I have a backup. Now, uh, there's two SD card slots in this camera. So if we take a look at the side of the camera, we've got two slots. And I could record all of that to each individual uh, card and have carbon copies. And so if one card, something happens to it, at least the other card has everything on it. But if I'm writing both RAW and JPEG images to both cards, it's gonna slow the camera down a little bit and I wanna make sure that the camera can go as fast as it does. So with those RAW and JPEG images, I'll jump over to the top menu item here underneath the wrench uh, under setup, record function card folder select. Now, what I'll do here is for photo and video, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just leave this alone for separate. So this setting would tell the camera, record photos to one card, record videos to the other card. I'm gonna leave that one disabled. 
For record options for photo, I'm gonna choose record separately. For record options for video, I'm going to have that one record to multiple because when we're shooting video, there is no like two different versions that we can record. So for video, I do want it recording video to both card slots so that I have a backup of each video file. And then the playback is fine. It can play back from the first card, that's fine. But now that I've set this, I'm gonna hit the menu button to go back and I'm gonna go all the way back to image quality here. And you can see I can choose what I want to record to what card. So you can see in card one, I have my raw images. In card two, I have my JPEG images. Now the cards uh, that you put in your camera are going to either um, help the read and write speeds of files or hinder, depending on the speed of the cards. If you're going to be shooting raw images and you want your camera to work at its optimum, you're going to need to go with a pretty fast SD card for your camera. And I'll outline down below, I'll put a couple of links to the SD cards that I use. I use Lexar and SanDisk SD cards. And uh, right now I'm using the V90 cards in most of my cameras. You don't necessarily need a V90 card for this camera. You can most definitely get away with a V60, but I'll link to a couple of options down there for you. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm saying in both cards record video. So if I'm shooting video, record video to both cards. So that way I have a backup. When I'm shooting photos, write the raw image to one card and write the JPEG image to the other card. And so I'm actually going to end up with a lot more capacity on my second card, assuming that both of my cards are the same. And the cards that I have in this camera are 64 gigabytes. And so being that I'm shooting raw images to one and JPEGs to the other, I'll have uh, plenty of room there for video as well. So that's the configuration that I go with. So let's go down and look at uh, some of the other settings that we have here. Um, I don't typically cho change anything here under this pane uh, or this pane, and we'll just keep kind of going along because um, the Canon menu is something I'm not as familiar with anymore, uh, although the menu is very reminiscent of my days shooting back uh, when I was shooting on Canon DSLR. So as we continue to move along, um, some of these I would change if I was shooting uh, specific things like HDR mode and, and focus, bra or, uh, focus bracketing and stuff like that. I might be utilizing if I was shooting real estate photography, but most of these settings I'm just going to leave alone. Um, touch shutter is something that I used to disable by default. Now it comes disabled. And uh, so we'll just continue to maneuver through here. Now under movie record settings, I can set these now or I can switch into video mode and set them. And what's interesting to me is that if you set them here while you're in photo mode, you also need to go and set them in video mode. So while I'm in photo mode, because I can shoot video while I'm still in photo mode on the camera, I wanna make sure that my video record quality is set to 4K, uh, essentially 24P, 23.98P. And uh, so that is set. And then I can, I'll can i just leave audio recording set to auto because um, I can change that specifically when I'm in uh, the video shooting mode. My ISO speed settings, I wanna make sure that I have a maximum set for if I am going to use automatic mode and by default it's 25,600, which is pretty high. If you go up that high, you're gonna have a little bit of noise in your video. And um, that is about it for that setting. Now, later on in this video, we'll switch into video mode and we'll look at the settings that are specific to video mode. So let's tap on autofocus and go over to that section. So under AF operation, it, by default, it is set to one shot. And I switched it to servo. So essentially that what that does is when you're holding the camera and you have your finger on the shutter button and you press down the shutter a little bit, it's going to capture focus on whatever it is that you're pointing that at and stop. It's assuming that you're taking pictures of something stationary, like perhaps you're taking a, a landscape picture or you're taking a picture of a person standing still, like in a portrait situation. Single point or just a one shot would essentially be sufficient for that. But if you're gonna be shooting moving objects, things that are moving quickly, sports or perhaps group photos where people might be kind of moving around just a little bit, you'll wanna go with Servo AF. Servo AF means a more continuous autofocus when you're holding down the shutter button and you're not going to miss that focus opportunity.
Back in the day, I actually used to disable the shutter uh, the shutter button, activating autofocus altogether because the cameras just were not accurate enough. I liked using this button on the back, which is the AF on button for autofocus. And I would just use this to activate autofocus. And if I didn't want the camera screwing around trying to figure it out on its own, I let off the button and then it wouldn't be, it essentially would be in manual focus mode at that point. Even if I hit the shutter button, the shutter button would not activate autofocus. But these days, because the cameras are they're really getting a lot better. I don't necessarily need to deactivate that anymore and use back button focus. Back button focus used to be my primary method, but now with, the, with these cameras uh, just getting so much faster with autofocus, I don't worry about it so much. So there aren't any other settings that I might change here. However, continuous AF is disabled by default. If you are shooting fast moving subjects continuously, you might want to enable continuous AF. So what this option does as it's disabled is it's only going to try and get autofocus when you have autofocus activated. So if I press down the shutter button part way, or if I press the AF on button, then because I have it in servo mode, it will continuously look for autofocus as long as I have some form of autofocus activated, whether it be the AF button, or I have my finger just gently pressing down the shutter button as I did there. If you want the camera to be continuously searching for autofocus, even when you don't have your finger on the shutter button or on the AF on button, then you can turn on continuous. Um, movie servo autofocus is enabled because you want a camera when it's shooting video to be adjusting autofocus on the fly, but sometimes in photo mode that can be a little bit frustrating because you thought that you had the camera like ready to go and the focus already set and then the camera just starts like continuously focusing on its own. So this is a personal uh, this is a personal choice here, I guess you could say, with continuous autofocus, whether you want it enabled or disabled. For me, I would enable it if I'm shooting sports and fast moving things where I want the camera to just kind of always be thinking about what it's going to focus on. But in most situations, I would leave it disabled for uh, so, so that the camera just isn't constantly trying to autofocus, which of course is going to drain your battery a little bit faster if it's just continuously searching while uh, the camera is turned on. So let's continue to move along here through the settings. Uh, some of these autofocus settings are customizable and you can customize them to your liking. I left them as their default. And now we're over in the setup menu where we've already been here once to configure our SD cards. Um, here, of course, is the format card option that we talked about earlier as well. Beep is the next option that I disable. It is set to touch, and so you can touch the screen, and if it enables focus, then it makes a beep, and there's more limited beep. Of course, if enable is turned on, it's gonna beep for uh, when it achieves autofocus by holding down the shutter, and there's gonna be a lot of beeps that take place. So there's kind of a, a medium option, which is just if you're using touch autofocus, and then of course you can disable it altogether, which is what I like to do. I don't like the camera beeping. I think it to be fairly distracting and especially when you are taking pictures of people and it, the camera is constantly beeping, it is something that they shouldn't be focusing on. They should be focusing on your direction, smiling, uh, looking directly into the camera. And the beep is just relatively annoying. And I like to have that disabled. Copyright information is another setting that I set up. What this allows your camera to do is write copyright data to your photos. This is great because if your photos end up on the internet without any copyright data, nobody is gonna know whether or not they can use those photos. And I wanna make sure that people can at least see if they know to look for the copyright information on a photo so that they know whether a photo of mine is uh, free to use or not. So we'll go into copyright information and other under author's name, I can use the touch screen here to quickly enter my name and then we'll go into copyright details and I'll type in all rights reserved. And now I can see that the author is set to my name and copyright is set to all rights reserved. Now, if I decide down the road that I wanna make one of those photos publicly uh, public use or a Creative Commons license, I can set that through Lightroom when I export my images. But as my images come out of my camera, I want copyright information written to those images so that way people don't end up uh, using them or if somebody finds my camera and some of my images get uploaded or something like that, then I've got copyright 
copyright data and uh, protection against my images. Now the custom function menu is pretty different for almost every single Canon camera, as it is with most cameras. Uh, a lot of these options in here can be customized to set different adjustment increments, and then also to set custom functions for different buttons. So as you can see here, exposure level increments, you can set this to a third stop or half stop. Um, so these are just adjustable and personal preferences based on how you want to shoot. I leave most of them set to the default, but I do come into the third pane of our custom function down to the third item down, which is custom buttons. And as I tap on this, you can see I get uh, an overlay of the camera and then the different buttons and options that I can adjust. Some of these buttons aren't going to function uh, in a normal way because I shoot in manual mode. And so some of them I don't need. For example, I don't need an auto exposure lock because I'm shooting full manual. And so this button up here, if I wanted to change it to do something else, Else, for example, be a quick way for me to switch between a frame rate when I'm shooting video or something like that. Um, these are different options that I can adjust. Uh, and you can see here I can adjust for photo or video. So if I wanted to set this one to something different, I can come in here and go through all of the different settings and just toggle through these and find a setting that makes sense for me. And I can also customize any of the other buttons on the top of the camera. As I rotate through them, you can see how it switches through and shows you all of the different buttons all over the camera. Um, one of the things that I used to change, as I mentioned before, I used to disable autofocus from being enabled with the shutter. If I wanted to enable back button autofocus only, I could go to this option and I could choose metering start as an option. And so now the shutter is not going to enable autofocus only this button back here will enable autofocus. And as I rotate the dial here and go down through all of these different settings, I can make changes to any of the settings to the majority of the buttons on the camera. Uh, one being the lens button. There is a, a button on the lens that I can use. And uh, most of the time that is set to disable autofocus as long as the button is pressed down. I like that feature being what it is. But what's nice is that I can also come in here and uh, make changes to buttons that are just video specific that make more sense for me when I'm shooting video. Now lastly, custom dials. These are different dials that are on the camera. Uh, for example, your, um, your shutter speed, your ISO, and your aperture dials if you wanted to change those or even remap them to be more consistent with another platform. For example, on a Sony, my ISO by default is back here, my shutter speed is here, and my aperture is on the front of the camera. And so if I wanted to make this shoot more like a Sony, I could. And so I can also set the control ring that is on the lens. Um, I love the fact that Canon has this third ring on zoom lenses and a second ring on prime lenses that I can set to adjust the ISO. So instead of having to uh, adjust it up here on the top of the camera, I could simply rotate the control ring on the dial and adjust my ISO, which I think is a fantastic feature. And of course you can map that to a lot of other uh, camera settings as well. Now the next setting I'm going to turn off is audio compression. I don't want any compression added to my audio. I want the highest quality audio that the camera will capture. And then at the end of the custom function section, of course, if I made some mistakes and I couldn't figure out how to get things back to where they were, I can always clear all custom functions without clearing all of the data on the camera. I could just simply clear custom functions, very simple. So that's gonna do it for the settings that I change on the Canon R6. It's a great camera. It really does actually come pretty configured with a lot of settings already set that I used to change back in the day when I shot on Canon. So I'm uh, very excited that the camera uh, has just progressed to where it is. It's a great camera. If you want to learn more about this camera, I have a link down in the description below to my course uh, that's a complete walkthrough on the Canon R6. I also have a few more videos Canon R6 related coming out, so make sure to subscribe to the channel here on Gear and & Light, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.